Hello and welcome to another episode of the Synapse e-learning series. With us today we have Dr. Ken Tam, a medical advisor at Milam, uh, specializing in multiple therapy areas including women's health and we'll be speaking about hormone replacement therapy in the menopause from a practical approach. Dr. Tam, thank you for accepting our invitation and being with us here today. Thanks for having me. I understand that you had a very busy schedule. You were here <laughs> in Malta for only a couple of days, but you managed to fit in our interview in, in the process. And uh, I would like to start my first question about uh, hormone replacement therapy. If you can give us a background, a historical background of the rise and fall of hormone replacement therapy in the past decades. Sure. So in terms of HRT for many, many years, um, you know, especially towards the end of last century, towards the late 90s, women were very happy to, to take HRT as they believed that it was going to keep them youthful. Um, there were a lot of observational studies that show that um, HRT had the potential to improve or reduce the incidence of cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis and dementia. So many women were very happy to take it and healthcare professionals were very happy to prescribe it. Um, but then two very influential studies came out towards the beginning of two, year 2000, including the Women's Health Initiative in year 2002. Um, and since then, the usage of HRT has significant, significantly decreased. Um, the atmosphere around HRT now um, is a lot more evidence-based and the prescribing of HRT is a lot more rational. Um, and mainly it's because um, there's much more understanding on the importance of the age of initiation and this window of opportunity. And I understand that there has also been an introduction of nice guidelines on how to use HRT back in November 2015. Can you elaborate? Yeah, sure. So because the media kind of exposure uh, or the, the, the media reports about the safety and benefits of, of HRT has not always been accurate. So the nice, nice um, guideline writing group decided to come up with a guideline to um, address some of these issues. So the, there's a knowledge gap and there's no real consensus about the, the, the long-term safety and benefits, uh, risk and benefits of HRT. And this knowledge gap often meant that there was an overestimation of the risks involved and an underestimation of the impact these symptoms have, can have on the uh, menopause of women's life. So the guideline is really written to help doctors to be more confident in prescribing, but for women to be more confident in uh, taking HRT. But as an ultimate goal really is to help healthcare professionals, to help women to be more informed uh, and make a decision on the treatment option, depending on their uh, risk profile, their personal risk profile. A specific question now, is HRT indicated for every woman reaching the menopause? Um, in terms of, as I mentioned, 20 years ago, women were taking it because they believed that it was going to help them to stay youthful and, and rejuvenate, uh, you know. But it's nowadays the usage is very, very different and HRT is not intended for, for that particular use. Um, it's not for every woman. Um, as a start, you need to have a woman who have severe menopausal symptoms uh, and these symptoms have uh, an impact on their quality of life. Um, and it's really important to bear in mind that 75% of women will have facial motor symptoms such as hot flushes and night sweats and 25% of these will classify them as severe symptoms and these will impact their home life, their work life um, and relationships with their partner as well. Um, so that's your group, which is your late 40s, early 50s, and you would prescribe HRT to help with menopausal symptoms like hot flushes. But there's a very different group of women who is known as the POI group, the premature ovarian insufficiency group, which are basically women who reach the menopause before the age of 40. And for that group of women, they have a significant higher um, mortality rate because they're more at risk of developing osteoporosis, cardiovascular disease and dementia. So for that particular group of women, they need to be on hormonal treatment, so either contraception or HRT at least till the age of 51, which is the natural menopause. So you would uh, classify this uh, subgroup, this population of women as the ideal candidates for starting HRT? Eh? Well, for, for this group of women, they need to be on it and it's not just for symptom control. So even if they don't have hot flushes, they need to be on it because it's to help them with, um, uh, to, to prevent or to preserve long-term health. 
but outside of the POI group, which is your typical menopausal women around the age of late 40s, early 50s, you would only really use HRT. And the main goal of that is to relieve hot flushes um, and night sweats and other um, menopausal symptoms. Very good. And when and how is it best to start HRT once a decision is made to start it? Of course. So as I mentioned, there, there obviously there needs to be a real need for it. So either your you know menopausal women around that late 40 early 50s who have symptoms or your poi group um and ideally um she would be a non-smoker don't have uh, don't drink an excessive amount of alcohol have a normal bmi quite active um because the risk profile for breast cancer and heart disease would be lower and there'll be the optimum state to 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 initiate to, to initiate um however having those things or if you don't have those things is not an absolute contraindication so even women who have high blood pressure high cholesterol they can still be on hrt but it's really understanding that individual's um, personal risk profile mm -hmm. and tailoring the treatment to maybe suit her better analyzing the pros and cons exactly, exactly. so that's very important yes so once hrt is started then how is it started so in terms of starting um there are, there's a lot of evidence to, to, to suggest that there's this, there is this window of opportunity that for most menopausal women, um, starting HRT um, under the age of um, 60 or within 10 years of the last period or, or the menopause, the, for those women, the, menopause, uh, the benefit is going to overweight or outweigh the risks. Um, and for women kind of older than that, that the balance is kind of more even but certainly for women within this particular age group which is under 60 or 10 years since the last period um, the benefit will outweigh the risk um, for example the elite trial showed that oral estrogen therapy has the uh, ability or, or evidence to slow clinical progression of atherosclerosis if it was starting within the six years but it would have no effect if it was started after 10 years since the last period. So in terms of the ideal time to start, it would be as close to the menopause as possible, uh, but certainly within the first 10 years. Obviously, a woman, once she grows older, just like any, any other human being, she undergoes physiological changes, which may necessitate yeah. treatment changes with regards to HRT. Yeah. What can you comment about this? So the guidelines um, available often talk about using the lowest effective dose possible. Uh, that doesn't mean that every woman should be on a certain dosage of estradiol because for that lady 0.5 milligram for example of estradiol may not be sufficient. Um, so it's really tailoring what is sufficient for that lady, uh, for that woman and using the lowest post dose possible for her. Um, and you know so in terms of once you've started you can start at a low dose and titrate up or if you've got a very young lady who had a, a, a total hysterectomy, um, had the ovaries removed, she may need a higher dose of estrogen. So in those women, what you might want to do is start high and then tailor down um, as, as she gets older. But the kind of the overall consensus is that the older the lady is, um, the lower the dose they should be using. And especially over the age of 60, the transdermal route would be better than oral route. Okay. Um, you've mentioned that window of, of opportunity. Um, can you define specifically an upper age limit when, when HRT should not be started? Yeah, I think generally um, o the, uh, for women who are over the age of 60, um, there is less evidence to support its use um, as the, 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 the risk profile is going to start to pile up against the benefits, the benefits. For, 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 for lady of that age group. Saying that, in terms of HRT treatment or menopausal treatment, it should be very individualized. So if you have a woman who is 60, very fit and well, no risk factor for heart disease or for um, venous uh, thromboembolism, um, the fact that she's 60 shouldn't be an absolute contraindication for her to have HRT. It should be a very individualized approach. However, saying that clinically, it's very uncommon that you have a woman who hits menopause around the age of 50 and don't do anything for 10 years and it'll be the first time she yeah, comes through the door. Yeah, but if, if that does happen, age itself shouldn't be an absolute contraindication, but it's very important that the, both the clinicians and the patients understands because of the age, there will be slightly more risks associated to HRT. 
and uh, we've mentioned the initiation of treatment. With regards to stopping HRT in a woman who's passed her menopause, um, how best to approach this? So in terms of stopping HRT, uh, there's no arbitrary limitation to when you should stop it. Um, women should have the option to take it as long as she's deriving symptomatic relief um, and she understands the risk associated with the treatment. Uh, again, it's, it's really important to have that annual review um, to make sure that she, you know, her risk factors haven't changed. Um, you know, for example, her, her cardiovascular um, system, blood pressure, cholesterol, has it changed? And therefore, is she at more, at a higher risk now than she was a couple of years ago when the treatment was started? Um, but if you did have a lady who wanted to continue beyond the age of 60, again, uh, I would suggest, you know, looking into using the lowest dose for, uh, available or using the transdermal route. And when it comes to stopping, there are no real right way to do it. Some clinicians would prefer the gradual decrease, so lowering, lowering the dose every three months or every six months. Alternatively, some people would just like to stop immediately. In terms of evidence from the NICE guideline, it would suggest that the gradually reducing approach would have um, some effect in terms of stopping treatment, um, sorry, in stopping the symptoms returning in the short term, but in the long term either would won't make, yeah, a, won't a, make a massive difference. We've uh, elaborated on the ideal candidate. With regards to absolute contraindications now, who should avoid HRT? Yeah, I mean the, the most important thing is to look up each product um, because they will have slight different absolute contraindications. Um, but as a general rule would be women who have past or suspected breast cancer or if they have uh, hormone dependent uh, cancers so for example endometrial cancer or meningioma uh, or if you've got a woman who have uh, unexplained vaginal bleeding um, that needs to be investigated before you would um, start HRT um, but you know there are other conditions available uh, out, out there you know for example with migraine and, and liver disease it's really important to think what would be the best treatment for those ladies rather than um, completely ruling them out for HRT. So as we've been saying, the prescription and the use of HRT should be followed up uh, on a case-by-case -case basis and obviously regularly through um, individual considerations for each and every patient. From your end, Dr. Tam, um, do you have any final remarks which you would like to add? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously with the, the, the release of a NICE guideline, the, the, one of the key thing is really individualizing the, the whole diagnosis and the treatment process, understanding the individual woman that is in the consultation with you, what's her baseline risk factors, how is the symptoms in, uh, in, affecting and impacting her quality of life, and what is the best HRT treatment that is available for her. Uh, and I think it's, it's very positive with the NICE guideline that the atmosphere around the, the usage of HRT is now much more evidence-based uh, and much more rational use. And it's really important that HRT is not a magic pill. It's there to, it's part of a treatment option for women, which includes not lifestyle as well, uh, including, you know, reducing alcohol and consumption and smoking. Um, but HRT for the right women, the benefit will outweigh the risk. Thank you, Dr. Tan, for your time. And uh, we hope that this interview has helped to further your knowledge on the subject. And we invite you to keep on following us on the Synapse Facebook page. Thank you. Thank you.